Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. And today I'm gonna to be showing you around the brand new VST MIDI effect MIDI Q from WA Production. This approaches sequencing chords in an interesting and creative way by using shapes instead of actual chord names and really helps to keep you inside of a certain scale and create ideas very quickly and easily. Let's jump into it and check it out. MIDI Q from WA Production. This is MIDI Q on the screen here. It is resizable, very helpful especially someone like me who's getting pretty old and I can't see small, <laughs> small things anymore. So you heard a track in the intro to this video. I'm gonna go ahead and play it again real quick. And the really cool thing about this track is that all of the musical elements are being triggered by MIDI Q. In fact, one instance of MIDI Q, if I just go ahead and close this real quick, You'll see that I've got Hive here, um, an operator here, and Diva here. So Hive is generating this sort of melody with the um, arpeggiated sequence. Operator from Ableton Live is generating the sub bass. And then Diva is generating some nice lush pads. And that's all being generated or triggered from one instance of MIDI EQ. And the way to do that is, let me just show you real quick before I jump into MIDI EQ. Um, you take a MIDI track, you drop an instrument on it. So if I come in here to instruments and just take like, just for instance, uh, acid bass here. And then from MIDI from, you wanna go MIDI EQ. In the next drop down, you wanna go MIDI EQ as well. And then just turn monitoring, monitoring into in. <laughs> and we've got a new instrument being triggered by that same one instance of MIDI Q. And obviously you can do that as many times as you want. Now, if you wanna drop something down an octave, you just use a MIDI effect right instead of Ableton Live. You can see here, I've dropped this down three octaves. Uh, this one I've dropped down a full octave, while this one is just riding on the actual octave inside of MIDI Q. So uh, that's the technical stuff. I just wanted to get out of the way real quick. Let's jump into this. So I'm gonna open it up, make it bigger again. As I said in the intro, Instead of chord names, which can be kind of like daunting, you get to use shapes here. And if you click a shape, you can see the different shapes you have. And these are different chords for whatever scale you choose. And the scale you choose is up here. So you can see I've got key, I can go up and down. So if I wanna change the key, and if I change the key here, let's go to like, uh, let's go to D minor. So I'm gonna go to D major and then right here, D minor. And now if I play this track again. Isn't that so dope? It's that same track, but now in the key of D minor. And that's the power of using MIDI EQ. So maybe you have a track with loops or something, or you already have a track going and you're looking to add chords or some sort of sequence, and you have it in a certain key, you just set the key here and then you just go creative town using these shapes and different sequences to get whatever feel you want. Now we can change how long each one of these chords lasts right here with the trigger. If I bring it down like this, this, is, this might not work out well because of how I structured this, the track to begin with, but. Still sounds all right. So this is how quickly each section will play through. Let me go ahead back to one for, for now. Off key is how far apart uh, the notes will be triggered from the actual bass form of the chord. So if, as I increase this, you'll see that these jump around. And we can add another voice down here at the bottom to get more complex chords. and it still sounds great. Isn't that incredible? Uh, if we wanna go up or down the pitch here, we can easily go up or down here. And it's really that easy. We can have up to eight different chords in a sequence and to add another one, we just click the addition button, click that, uh, oops, click there, and then we can change the shape. Uh, if we click again, we actually have different variations. 
So we have up to eight different variations. So if I just click variation one, or actually nine, excuse me, because we have V0. Now we've changed the chord variation down here. Is that not amazing? And it just sounds so good every time. You just know that it's theoretically correct. So you could just keep going and being, you know, just going through variations, trying out different chords until you find something that works. And then you just drag and drop the MIDI or just keep it running, being triggered by MIDI Q, whatever you want to do. If you want a little bit more control, drag and drop the MIDI into your DAW and you'll be good to go. It's right here. Open it up. There we go. To remove any one of these, you just got to exit out. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also trigger them down here if I hold down this play button. That's what it sounds like, each one of these. We can do that. And another thing we can do as well is, let's say I really want my first chord to be this B minor, okay? And by the way, it shows you what it is down here. If I click right here, I can lock it down. And then if I come into my variations again, it's not going to change that. It's always going to be B minor while the other ones change. But you can still be confident that the sequence will still be inside of the scale that you set up here at the top. Is that not incredible? So that's a very basic look at what this has to offer. Um, it's very simple to use, but once you have your instruments and your nice patches lined up, it's really easy to get some creative juices flowing and really get something that's sounding really nice quite easily. If I come in here. Oh, one other thing I wanna point out too is this is the velocity. And as I decrease the velocity, the actual saturation will decrease as well. So you can see visually inside of here. Let me come in and unlock this for a second. You can see that this one is desaturated. This one's a little bit more saturated. It just means that we've adjusted the velocity over here. So we can do that quite easily. And you need to also, while you're using the velocity inside of here, you need to make sure whatever VST you're using has velocity sensitivity turned on. Okay, so if, I mean, if your synth doesn't have velocity sensitivity turned on, the velocity sensitivity inside of MIDI Q isn't gonna work. But luckily most patches inside of most synths already have that sort of functionality available. The last thing to really point out about MIDI Q is there are a bunch of presets you can choose from up here, and that's pretty much it. I mean, just come in here and just, let's just try one other thing. Let's check out um, Into the Sunset. Let's just see what this sounds like with this setup, just changing a different preset here. <laughs> Is that not incredible? I mean, I've just been having a lot of fun making this video and just stumbling upon happy accidents and just, just beautiful melodies and chords and bass all combined by just tweaking out some of the functions and parameters inside of MIDI-Q. Anyway, this is available right now on PluginBoutique.com. I highly suggest you click that link in the video description to check it out. And anyway, as always, I'm Joshua Casper. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.